Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, animate a bouncing ball using uh, the ball rig that I provided in the canvas shell. Um, so go ahead and download that and once it's downloaded we can go get ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is uh, obviously open the file. So I'm going to go to file and open and then I'm going to locate my file and click open and don't save. So you're going to get this pop-up window that comes up that says file contains mental array nodes, yada, 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 right? Um, basically what it's saying is that uh, in a nutshell, Maya is no longer part, or excuse me, mental array is no longer part of Maya by default. You can download it at this page. I believe NVIDIA bought the rights for it a couple of years ago. Um, the last time I remember it being uh, used is in Maya 2016. Um, where you had basically full access to it and then in Maya 2017 I believe they introduced Arnold and also uh, set limitations on the use of mental ray so um, and from 2018 on it has not been a part of uh, mental ray has not been a part of Maya uh, since then entirely so um, it's been replaced with the Arnold renderer and uh, the Arnold renderer is a uh, top-notch production uh, level renderer so uh, and been used on uh, tons of uh, animations that I'm sure you've seen before I believe DreamWorks may have used it uh, for a while if they haven't already um, began using uh, their own sort of renderer but I know major companies uh, do use it and you can sort of look up which, if in case you're interested, uh, which companies do still use it. Um, anyway, it is a high quality render, and I just wanted to let you know uh, why this pop up is coming up. So, uh, this file is older, so it no longer contains those mental ray nodes in this version of Maya. So, it still sort of carries over to this version, even though this version no longer has it. So, that's kind of what it's saying. And then I press OK. And I get another pop-up that says error have occurred, errors have occurred while reading this scene that may result in data loss. Please check the script editor for details. And basically, as I was just referring to, that this is saved in an older version of Maya, and it still retains that node information, which this version of Maya no longer supports. So um, just click OK, and everything should work fine. So I'm going to show you one other way, just in case. Um, and actually, before I do that, you'll notice that I have two windows here uh, of the outliner and that's just how it opens by default so you can go ahead and just click the four window view pane and then I'm just gonna space bar into my viewport here now uh, with that being said I'll I'd like to show you one other way to open this just in case the file open didn't work for whatever reason if you go to file and import and then you locate your file click on it and then just click import it'll load right up so um, just in case. Anyway, so now that I've got that said, let me go ahead and discuss what some of these controls do. So I'll start with this one around the ball itself. And this is the master control. And basically, you're able to move this around with this, rotate it, but you cannot scale it. So this is the size. You cannot change the size of this ball. Um, other things I'd like to uh, show you is the up control and the down control. Both do the same thing except from uh, a different point on the ball. So the up control controls the squash and stretch of this ball on the top where this one, the down control, controls it at the bottom. You'll also notice that you can't uh, translate it in any other direction except on the y-axis as you can see here in the channel box. So then, and the same thing for the up control. You also can't rotate or scale it. So we also have the SS orient control and basically this just orients which direction uh, the up and down will be squashing from. So if I change the rotation on it, now I select this tool, you'll see it stretches from here. And although it's pointed straight up, it still goes up uh, on an angle. Just to make it a little bit visually clearer, if you open up your attribute editor or your uh, tool settings here, if you click on this little uh, bullet points with the hammer on it, your tool settings will pop up and I dock mine off to the side over here and if you change the axis orientation from world to object you'll see that it just points in that same direction now just an FYI for anyone uh, who would like to 
dive a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole, if you will. Um, so anyway, now that I've kind of covered all the controls, let's go ahead and get started to animate. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to just move myself up here, right above the timeline. So this way we can see the timeline while I'm working here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a polyplane. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it. Let's just make it 20, 20, and 20. Okay. And I'm going to hide the grid now because I have my polyplane there. And I'm just going to name this ground plane mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and go to layers and create a layer from selected. And I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to rename it ground plane layer. And I'm going to click save. Now what I'm going to do is, so I don't accidentally, I'm just using this ground plane as a visual reference for where this ball makes contact. The next thing I'm going to do is on this open little square here, if I tap it once, this stands for, I believe, transparent. And basically you can see the wireframe, but it's transparent. Now if I click it and it, I change it to R, this uh, means renderable. So now it'll render in your, uh, if you were to run an Arnold render, uh, or just render it in general, uh, it will show, but I can't select it in my viewport. So this can be really handy, uh, especially when animating and you're moving different things in your scene so you don't accidentally select something you don't want to animate. So that being said, uh, let's get to uh, the nitty gritty here. So I'm going to start by selecting the master control. and. What I'm going to do here first on my first keyframe is I'm just going to drag it up. And if your tool handles are too small, you can use minus or plus to increase the size of it. And I can also go into my translate Y and I'm just going to set it to 10. I'm going to set it to a nice, clean, easy number to work with, which is 10. Now I'm going to just sort of click off of this. So when I type 10 and enter, I want to create a keyframe and set a keyframe by tapping S. If you don't select off of that, and you'll notice down here, it sets a little red line on frame one. And all of these in the channel box become red. Now, if you don't do that first, I type 10 and then enter. And now I try to set a keyframe on frame one. It thinks you're typing into our settings here. So um, be sure to just click in your scene, just rotate or pan or something really quickly, and then go ahead and tap S. And now you'll see these all uh, become red, and that's because you've now set a keyframe for that frame of animation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this down to frame 10. And at frame 10, I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to make it just touch contact with the ground. And I already know that it's at 0, so I'm just going to type 0 and tap S on my keyboard and now you'll see I have a red line on uh, frame 10 on my timeline here and the next thing I'm gonna do is bring it back up on frame 20 so I'm gonna scrub to frame 20 and now I'm gonna bring it back up and I'm gonna bring it back up to 10 and press enter and then I'm going to press S to set keyframe so I'm gonna show you one other way uh, to do this so let's just say I have it at 5 and I'm going to press S. So let's just to show you one other way to do this. Um, on frame one, if I want to copy a frame's information, I can click middle mouse button, my middle mouse button click, and drag to frame 20 and then tap S. And now you'll see that it also copies all that information. So that's a quick way to do it. All right. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a uh, separate keyframe, but I want to make it so it's on the up and down because I want to create a squash and stretch. So I want to show you before I even go into that a quick way because if I start bringing this down, and let's just say on frame like seven, I want this to come up, right? So it's stretching or whatever. I'll tap S, but now it's always stretched, right? So I want to show you another way to do this. I'm going to just undo to the beginning. And what I'm going to do is there are not too many handles, so I'm going to select each one, holding Shift, every controller. And then on my custom shelf here, 
I'm going to go to, yours might be over here in the middle. I'm going to go to um, modify, no, create, set, quick select set on my custom shelf. Make sure you have your custom shelf selected. And I'm going to click quick select set. So once I click that, I'm just going to click all for short for select all and click add to shelf. And now once I click on this, I'll be able to select all of these simultaneously. I'm just going to go ahead and tap S and create keyframes because now I'm going to create keyframes for every single one of these on 1, 10, and 20. 1, 10, and 20. So now every single key or every single controller has a keyframe set on 1, 10, and 20. So now on frame seven or eight, let's just say eight. I'm gonna grab just my top controller and I'm just gonna stretch it out and I'm gonna click on my select all and click S. And just because I did that, you'll notice because I reset it, it doesn't come back up to frame one without that information. So now it stretches and when it makes contact now, I want this top controller to squash it. And this is one of the 12 principles of animation. So I'm going to tap S on my keyboard. And I only set that for that one. So if I want to set a keyframe for all of my controllers, which I find to be a little bit easier when animating in the beginning, um, I'm going to select all and press S. And then frame 12, I'm just going to go two frames out. I'm going to grab my up controller. And however you do this is totally fine. And I can also do select all and click S. And now it comes back up to its original size. So that's with my select all. So I'm going to do frame uh, in my little box here that I have highlighted right around here, right here where my mouse is. I'm going to type 20 and press enter. And now I, in my timeline, I only see the 20 frames that I need. So I'm going to click play. And you'll notice it's playing extremely fast. So in order to slow that down, I'm going to right click on the play button and I'm going to go to playback speed and I'm going to change it from play every frame free to real time. And then I'm going to click play again. And you see I have my bouncing ball. So I'm going to go over this one more time and I'll show you using the import. I'm going to go file import and I'm going to select the ball and click import, click OK. And I'm just going to show you without the quick select set how to do this. So I'm just going to go on my master control and I'm going to set this to, and it's going to look identical no matter what. Uh, well, not no matter what, I have to set all the keyframes, but I'm going to hit S on my keyframe at one. Here on frame 10, I'm going to set my master control at zero and tap S. And on frame 20, I'm going to bring this back up to 10 and tap S. So now that I've got that set, I'm going to change this when it imported, it changed it back. So I'm going to change this back to 20. So now that I've got that done on my top controller here, you'll notice I don't have any keyframe set on frame one. So I need to make sure I set a keyframe on that before I animate, because if I go to frame eight and stretch it and tap S, it's going to be stretched the entire time. So on frame one, I need to make sure this is at zero. At zero, there we go, and tap S. And now it'll stretch at that same point. On frame 10, I'm gonna just bring this down, squash it, bring it all the way down to negative one, tap S. On frame 12, I'm going to bring it back up, tap S. And now on frame 20, I'm going to set it to zero and also tap S. So now my top controller has a keyframe set on 1, 8, 10, 12, and 20. But if you did it this way, we have every single controller set with a keyframe at frames 1, 8, 10, 12, and 20. And when you start getting into animating more and more, you'll notice that, especially when you're just learning, 
that it kind of helps in a way to have that quick select set button in order to set a keyframe on every single thing. So when you go ahead and play it back, sometimes you will realize like, oh, I forgot to set a frame on that. Um, or you'll be scratching your head and be like, why isn't it working right or animating properly? And typically nine times out of 10, it's because you forgot to set a keyframe on just one individual thing. So that's where the quick select set comes in, uh, comes in handy a lot. So anyway, I've shown you two ways to do this. They both do the same exact thing. If I hit play, you'll see. And I did both of them two different ways. So um, so now that I've animated this bouncing ball with the rig two separate ways, I want to go ahead and show you one final way to uh, do this. And that's just by using a sphere shape. So I'm going to go ahead and just click stop on this. And I'm going to go to my poly modeling tab and click on the sphere. And now I've got my sphere here. And now I need to be a little bit more reliant on my uh, orthographic views. So on my frame one, I'm going to create a keyframe here. Well, for now, anyway, so I, ha I know where zero is. And basically, I just want to make sure it's just touching the ground plane, which it actually isn't. So it looks like at just one exactly, it's set, touching the ground plane. And I'm even going to bring it over here to the right and tap S one more time just to show you here. So um, I've set a couple keyframes on this, but that's really just to sort of get it started. Now, what I'm going to do is I know I want this to be at translate Y equals one on frame 10. So I can middle mouse button click here and tap S and or if I undo it, I already have that keyframe set there, so I can just tap S here. Now, this is all going to sort of change here momentarily. And on Translate Y, I'm going to bring this up to 10. And you'll notice because of the size difference and, and different attributes based on this sphere versus these uh, rigs, um, it's going to be at a set slightly different height. But I'm going to go ahead and tap S on my keyboard. And now I've got uh, my starting point here at 1, frame 1 and frame 10 and now on frame 1 I'm just going to middle mouse button click and drag to frame 20 and now I've got a bouncing ball but I also need to add some of the squash and stretch so in frame 7 or yeah frame 7 I'm just going to scale it bring it down and just sort of scale it I thought something like that a squash and stretch so I'm sort of squashing and stretching it right and I'm going to go ahead and tap S. So you'll see it starts to come down. And then here, I need it to squash. So I'm going to just scale this down. And I'm going to scale it outward. And depending on how much I want it to squash, will make a difference. And now I need to make sure that I have it just touching the ground. Oop. And the reason it did that is because I didn't set a keyframe before I shifted it. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to set a keyframe. And now I'm going to drag it down to where it's going to make contact and tap S one more time. And now over here, what I'm going to do is just play it back. And you'll see it starts to get back to its original shape. But I also want it to stretch again. So my frame 7, I can copy these attributes just by holding my middle mouse button click down and dragging over to frame 13 this time and tapping S. And now when I play it, I have a bouncing ball. And both are doing uh, very similar things. So um, the rig is nice because it can do a bunch of different stuff, which we'll get into uh, in uh, another lab. Um, but you can really play around with it and, and get some really, really cool, unique results. But the coolest part about the rig is that if I wanted to rotate, and this is rotating the texture, if I select this point here, oh, not that one. If I set select my master control, you'll notice that the ball will actually rotate. And this comes in handy if it's like bouncing across the floor where you get this rotation on the ball. Whereas this one, you can't at all. So that's the major difference. And that's why this uh, animation rig is so much uh, nicer and easier to use versus uh, just a generic 
sphere shape. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. And uh, thanks for watching. And yeah, that's about it.